Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube live video. And today I'm going to show you, oops, I guess I need to scooch it up just a little bit. Hopefully you can see it on the screen okay. I'm just going to show you how I made a couple of really quick cards with the Swirly Frames uh, stamp set. This is, you know, one of those good ones from the annual catalog that um, I probably don't use often enough. Uh, but it was a sketch challenge that made me pull it out and it had a little, what looked like sort of a wreath on it. So... Originally, I started by just making the Christmas one, and then I thought, you know what, this would make a really good fall wreath card too. So, so I pulled out the um, uh, Gather Together stamp set bundle, and I used that one as well. So, um, so anyway, so these are the cards we're going to be making today, and I have things set up to do both of them. So hopefully, we'll have enough time. If y'all want to stick around and uh, watch both, that is awesome. And if not, you know, basically it's the same card, just a little different um, embellishments on it. So nothing too complex that I'm doing here. So those are the two cards that we're going to be making today. Um, the stamp set that we are using is the Swirly Frames stamp set, um, which again, this is a good one from the annual catalog. Lots of good uh, frame images. The one we're using in particular is the circle today. But this is definitely another one of those um, good stamp sets. So um, I'm going to set that aside for a second. And oh, I'm kind of all out of order because I was going to talk about something else first. And then I changed my mind and decided we do this first. So, <laughs> um, so the other thing that I used here was, or one of the other things I used was the Gather Together Stamp Set Bundle. This is one that is in the mini catalog, the, Janu or the August to December mini catalog from Stampin' Up. So it's a good stamp set, and there are coordinating dies that go with the pumpkins and the leaf. Um, so these images on here. And then there are some really cool dies here. The, the leaf dies actually cut and embossed, so they're really awesome. Love this die set. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to be using. And then another one, oh, and actually on that same card, I used a sentiment from the Sending Sunshine stamp set. Um, so I switched it and did Hoping Your Day is Perfect. So it was a little more general card as opposed to a thanksgiving -y or a thank you card. So I thought we could kind of use this as a general fall card instead. Um, for the poinsettia card, I actually used um, the poinsettia petals stamp set. Hey, I'm glad y'all are here. I started to wonder <laughs> if I was talking to myself. So hey, Deborah and Tammy and Karen and Barbara so I don't know if comments are just wait are late rolling in or you know what's going on but definitely there seems to be a little more delay than normal so uh, all right so we've got poinsettia petals is the stamp set again this is from the mini catalog and Danette and Karen and Jerry thanks for hopping in today ladies so uh, so this is one of the um, stamp sets from the mini catalog which I love and you know I use it all the time hey Beth thanks for uh, stopping in and saying hello it's also got coordinating dies now I actually only used one well it's two of them but technically they're, technically they're the same die but it's this little tiny flower die I used to cut the flowers on this otherwise I didn't use this die set at all which is kind of shocking um, so this is the these are bundled together in the mini catalog and the gather together is also bundled together in the mini catalog to save 10 percent so y'all what do you want me to show you first should we go through the card first or should I show you the little sneaky peeky that's an even more sneak peek than the Kirby celebrations that we've already seen so I'll give it one second <laughs> I may just show you the sneak peek so I can get that done uh, so I got in my sweaty little hands an awesome new stamp set bundle. It's actually a whole uh, product suite that uh, some of us that are attending the onstage event in November, the onstage at home stamp it up event, um, a demonstrator event that they've got, they've got some new products that we got to purchase way, 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 way early. So this is the Dragonfly Garden stamp set and yay, it's beautiful. I love the little dragonflies. That flower image is amazing got some good sentiments in it. Um, this one actually will stamp your dragonfly wings and give you sort of a, um, I don't know how to describe it, like a, a more artsy look over the top of them. And I may or may not have played with this and already made a card. So you'll be seeing this soon on my blog. <laughs> so it's a beautiful set and I absolutely, yes, I'm with you, Jerry. I love the dragonfly. And this time around, we actually got a punch that coordinates with it. So yay, even better. Um, I know we all love dies, but punches are really fast and easy to use. So there's a coordinating punch with it. Um, so this is bundled together and um, it's a double punch. So it's got a little dragonfly. Hopefully you can see it up here and then a bigger dragonfly down here. And I know there's a terrible glare on it uh, when, I, when I show it in the light. So 
Hey, Mary, thanks for hopping in from windy southwest Minnesota. So, um, yes, the dragonfly, it's a good one. So there's the, the punch in the stamp set. And then they also have this awesome pack of Dandy Garden 6x6 six six designer series paper. And before you ask, yes, the punch works for some of the dragonflies in the paper. I already tested it out, so yep, <laughs> it does. Um, so in this pack of designer series paper, the colors are Basic Black, Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Misty Moonlight, Mossy Meadow, and Whisper White. So again, this is a way, 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 way sneak peek of this. Um, this will be available in the January to June 2021 mini catalog, but some of us got it really early um, because we are going to the onstage event. And so we had an opportunity to order it early. And of course, you know, I had to expedite it because I can't not expedite things. So, <laughs> so I get to show it to you today. So hello from uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. And yes, it's an awesome set and this paper is beautiful. So, uh, so this is one of the sheets. The backside of it is just, the backsides of all of them are a little more neutral, kind of more um, backgroundy type uh, looks to them. So. That's one of the pages. And then we've got some cute little bees on this one. Flip it over and it's blue, um, misty moonlight on the backside. This one is bumblebee and it's striped and it's really cute. And then on the other side of it, we've got some mossy meadow background with some leaves. And then we've got, um, what is the, the orange? Eclipse of coral, I thought that's what it was, in mossy meadow and bumblebee in this one. And then the backside is misty moonlight. And then this one is Bumblebee. And it, the colors probably aren't showing extremely accurately on here because the weather is kind of icky today. <laughs> so it's a little dark in my, uh, my Stampin' Studio. So um, this is Blackberry Bliss on the back side of it. So again, very pretty patterns in this one. Um, then we've got some blue and white stripes. And on the back side, Calypso Coral. Um, these are like the little dandelion looking flowers. And then here are some more dandelions, except this one's got uh, misty moonlight in the background. And then the back side of it's got the yellow, the bumblebee. And a couple more sheets. This one is misty moonlight and whisper white. And then we've got calypso coral just designs on the back. And then we've got some more of the dandelions in bumblebee. And this one looks like, mm, not, that looks like maybe just. It's like gray in there, so it's like kind of heathered gray look to it. And the paper is fabulous. It's really, really, really pretty. So, hey, Lori, so glad that you hopped in today. So the back side of it has got um, the dandelions in Bumblebee. And then we've got another one. Back side has got the dandelions in it. You've never pushed the expedited, Karen. Oh, I can't believe, oh, I don't think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> um, but I also did test out the the bim bumblebee. I almost call them bumblebees. Good heavens, the dragonfly punch. And some of the littler dragonflies in here, you can actually punch out with the small dragonfly in the dragonfly punch. So, dragonfly punch. Having a hard time saying words today. So, um, so and this paper is the same way. So there's um, some of the dragonflies that you can punch out in there. And then we've got Mossy Meadow. And then this one again is your dragonflies. So you can punch this one and then this, the kind of medium sized one. So both of these you can punch out with that awesome little punch. So now the unfortunate part is they don't line up exactly. So you probably will have to like snip up your paper to do it, but you can still punch them both out of there, which I was excited to see that. So, um, and then the backside is a Blackberry Bliss. It is a bad, bad thing when you figure out that button because, yeah, it gets, I call it stuck at my house, that it, it often gets stuck and I use it, you know, way more than I should. <laughs> so um, also in this product suite, and I obviously have not opened this completely, is Mossy Meadow, um, what is the name of this stuff? Braided Linen Trim. So we had some, I feel like, that was similar to this. I can't remember if it was Mossy Meadow or not, but I know it was one of the darker greens. Um, but it's just, it's the same as that um, braided linen trim that we currently have. That's kind of the more natural look, but this one's just been dyed with Mossy Meadow. And then the last thing in the suite, these are called ladybug trinkets, and I will put a couple of them in my hand and try to hold them up and steady close to the camera so you can see how cute they really are. Hopefully it'll take a second to focus on it, but they're really cute. Cute, cute, cute little ladybugs. So um, they're kind of a, a brass color is what I would call it. So 
Anyway, so that is the new suite. Again, those products will all be available starting in January. So we've got a long time to wait for them. But of course, because, you know, I am the way I am, I couldn't wait to show you all the new stuff. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, you, we, yeah, we also have the trim and reel red. You are definitely correct on that, Karen. So, all right. So, we have lots of good stuff coming, lots of things to look forward to. I can't wait to see the rest of the catalog. I know it's going to be awesome. So, you know, just a couple sneak peeks that we've had are awesome. So I know it definitely will be fantastic. Um, so moving right along, let's get into the designer series paper sale. I will mention this quickly because I know I've said it pretty much in every video. They really did outdo themselves with that suite of stuff. And I was so excited that we get to order it so early. So yay <laughs> and play with it. So, um, designer series paper sale Stampin' Up! has going on for the month of October, 15% off, um, packs of designer series paper from the current catalogs from the annual catalog and the holiday catalog. There are 15 select packs of paper on sale for 15% off. Um, so this is the list of papers. They are posted out on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. So let me know if you have any questions on that. And the, again, that is available during the month of uh, October from Stampin' Up. So, okay, let's get going actually for real on the cards now. <laughs> So, uh, so this is the first one that I'm going to do. I figured I'd do sort of in order of the holidays, and we're going to, I pre-cut quite a few things here on this to save us a little bit of time, um, but we are going to start with very vanilla cardstock. This piece is cut to three and three quarters by five inches, and um, the reason I did that is because you, it shows off more of the pretty gold trim on the gold cards and envelopes if you trim it down just a little bit to five and or five inches by three and three quarters rather than doing so my normal card fronts are usually four by five and a quarter so and then i have got the circle from the swirly frame stamp set and a little sahara sand ink and i'm just going to do a little stamping here just ink up this image well and then i'm going to stamp it over here on the edge um, not really any special way to stamp it um, just sort of that it, so that it goes off the edge is really all that mattered in this one because that was how the sketch wanted it to be. Next thing that I did was um, took the little wheat image from the Gather Together stamp set in Bumblebee ink, and I'm going to stamp that um, around on my, kind of over my um, circle image here. And I kind of wanted it to look like, I don't know, like I said, I was going for a wreath look with it, whether I accomplished that or not. So... <laughs> uh, Oh yay, I'm glad that, uh, glad that my uh, video popped right up when you turned on your phone. So definitely magic. It must be the day, I don't know. <laughs> it's not quite Christmas, so we can't say there's truly magic in the air, I guess. But um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of uh, stamping. Just gonna stamp this four times over the, the little wreath image here. All right, and set that aside. The next thing I'm gonna do is stamp the sentiment. And I did that in Versamark ink. And again, this is a sentiment from Sending Sunshine that I'm gonna be using here. And um, again, Versamark ink, just inking it up well. And I'm gonna close up my ink pad because I am notorious for spilling um, my embossing powders everywhere if I leave the ink pads open and then it sticks all over the ink pad, which is not very much fun. <laughs> so, all right, so I've got that stamped here on the very vanilla. And then this is gonna get way close to the screen and I apologize, um, but I've got my gold embossing powder in a little Ziploc container and I'm just gonna pour it over the sentiment. I'm gonna try to be a little careful to keep it off of the um, images that I've stamped over here because they're probably still a little bit wet and um, we'll pick up some of that embossing powder, which I don't necessarily want. So just kind of flicking off the, the excess powder here and I'm gonna set that aside and pull out my heat tool. Uh, the Stampin' Up! heat tool, if you don't have one, has got two settings on it. The level one setting is for drying ink and the or ink and paper. So if you have, you know, doing a watercolor or something, you can use the level one setting. Level two setting is for heat embossing. Um, so gonna do a little heat embossing here. Hey, Diane, I'm so glad that you joined today. So you may want to, if you have a few minutes, go back when we're done here to the beginning of the video because I did a little sneak peek at some more new product that's coming in. Um, it'll be here in January. So it's a new dragonfly set, which is awesome. So, <laughs> so all right, so I've got that done. And then I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna let it dry for a second. Use a couple Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere this to the card front uh, or my half Stampin' Dimensionals. As um, if you follow me, you know that I'm cheap and like the half stamp Stampin' Dimensionals better than the whole ones. 
So I just snip them right in half, right down the middle of the dimensional. And they hold just as well as a full dimensional does. And um, I think they fit a lot better in most places. So that is why I do it. But whole dimensionals are just fine. If you choose to use the whole one, I'm just cheap and don't like to. <laughs> so, all right. So now the only sort of tricky part to this is just laying it on here and making sure that I get it fairly centered. And the nice thing is everything is kind of straight lines along the edges, so it's easy to get it lined up and hopefully pretty well set square on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of coloring, not a ton of coloring, but just a little bit on some of the pumpkins. I, yeah, I know, Karen keeps telling me I'm not cheap, that it's frugal, but I don't know, I still feel cheap. <laughs> So I've uh, got uh, pumpkin pie Stampin' Blends here, and I'm starting with the light one on my little pumpkin in the background. And then I'm going to come back in with the dark and add a few um, low lights in here. And again, these are little images, so I don't spend tons and tons of time coloring and trying to get everything to look absolutely perfect and beautifully shaded and all that. Um, so I just kind of get a little ink on it, um, try to do a little shading as best I can with it where I feel like the low lights would be and the, the highlights would be. And then we just go on. So um, the nice thing about the Stampin' Blends is they are definitely very forgiving um, and very easy to use. So if you've not used alcohol markers before, they make it super simple because I'm I'm not very good at coloring really. And I feel like these sort of sort of make me feel like I'm a professional. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, I've got Light Mango Melody. Oh, you do that with your dimensionals too? Yes. See, my, my upline back when I still had an upline <laughs> a way long time ago actually taught me that trick. And I'm like, my goodness, that is just the smartest thing ever. They last twice as long. And really, you don't need to have a whole one to hold anything down. The half ones work just as well. So I was so glad when she shared that with me. So... And I've converted a few people on my team to use in the half dimensionals. Not everybody, but there, there are a few of us out there doing it. So, um, all right, and just coming back in, I added a little bit of dark um, with the, the Mango Melody Stampin' Blends, and I'm coming back in with the light and just doing a little bit of quick shading. And then I've got the light um, Soft Suede Stampin' Blends marker. And this one, I didn't bother to try to blend it because it's so, so small on here that um, I don't think you could really tell if I'd pull, pulled out the other marker or not. So um, the next one, I actually did kind of a combination of two colors on this one. So I used Light Mango Melody and Light Pumpkin Pie when I was doing my coloring on it. I initially put down the mango for kind of the background color on it, or the, the full color on it, I should say. And then I added in a little bit of pumpkin pie and then blended them together with the mango again. So it, it gives it just a slightly different color of orange um, because I wanted the pumpkins to sort of stand out a little bit. So you could see that this one is true pumpkin pie, this one is true mango, and then this one is a combination of the two. So they're kind of three different colors, even though they're all pumpkins and I used basically the same two colors on them. This just sort of added a little a little different shade, I guess, of the, the colors that I was using. So that was my goal with it, is to try to get it to look similar, but um, different enough that you could see that it was definitely a different pumpkin back there. So I'm gonna come back in here with my light mango melody and kind of blend the two together. Um, that's one other thing that I find fun about using the blends is that you can sort of pick up different colors, as long as they're in this similar color family and sort of blend them together like I did with this one and get a whole different color. I don't know what color I'd really call it because it's not pumpkin pie, it's not mango melody. I don't know, I guess we'll just call it orange. <laughs> so um, then I've got the soft suede Stampin' Blends here that I'm gonna do quick coloring on the stem with. Uh, next up, let me get these out of the way. I've got some glue dots here. And I'm gonna just adhere the pumpkins down with a couple of glue dots to the card front, hopefully, if I can get the, come on. They're being picky today and not wanting to stick. I think it's because I kind of stuck them to the side of the box. <laughs> so I took the sticky off, so whoops. Anyway, I guess I need to use a different one because I stuck it to the side of the box and it's now not wanting to stick to the back of my project like it should. All right, I think I finally got them. Maybe. And then I picked one up. Oh, boy. Stay, silly things. I don't know what I'm doing with these. Hmm. 
Anyway, maybe I'll pull out stamp and seal. I guess that'll work too. If I can't get this silly one to stick, stamp and seal to the rescue. So that will work as well. I'm not sure if it's because they're still wet from the alcohol, so maybe that's why they're not sticking as well as they should be. Um, but just gonna use a little stamp and seal to adhere down the other little pumpkins and just adhering it kind of over the top of the first one. And then the next thing I've got is some rhinestones. And I've got some of them colored ahead um, that I'll be using on the other project, but I took, whoop, I want my dark mango melody. And actually with Stampin' Blends, if you do not know this, you, some of you may, you can actually color embellishments with the Stampin' Blends. So you know, all it takes is just a quick color over the top. I do find that if you want it to be a little darker color or a little more of a true color, I should say, the darks tend to work better than the lights do. The lights will give you a little shade of the color, um, but the darks definitely give you um, pretty close, pretty accurate when you're coloring embellishments with the dark ones, you get a pretty accurate color on it. So I find that the dark ones work a little bit better for me. Um, and they really don't take much at all to dry. So I usually try to give them a minute or two, but um, I don't think you really even need to do that with the, with the blends markers. So, all right. Well, thank you, Pinky. I appreciate that. So, okay, so we've got the outside of this one done. The inside is super quick. And the second card, I promise, will be faster. And I'll try to stop talking so much. But <laughs> so um, I'm just using Sahara Sand ink and a couple of the little pumpkins that I stamped on the outside. Whoop, hopefully I'm still on screen. And I'm um, going to stamp these on the inside of the card. And again, that was the Harris Sand ink that I used. So I'm going to take this, close it up, and set it over here. And then we're going to use a little stamp and seal. Man, I got stuff stuck to everything. And we're going to adhere this to the inside of the card base. And this one is going to be all done. So I tried to keep these pretty simple. The sketch that um, I was copying was a really clean and simple sketch, um, but they were just, they, they turned out, I think it turned out really cute. So I was so happy with it that I went ahead and made a second one. <laughs> so um, what I love about the card base, which I probably didn't even talk about, these are the gold cards and envelopes, and they're pre-printed with a gold edging on them. They're vanilla in color, and they have an awesome kind of shimmery gold envelope that is all done for you that comes with it. So it's all packaged together. So this is what you get when you order the gold cards and envelopes. You get the, the card base with the pretty embossed gold on it and the pretty envelopes to go with it. So this is an awesome, awesome, awesome pack of cards. If you don't have it, you definitely need to get some of those. So uh, Karen says she just put in an order for the gather together and swirly frames along with the onstage bundle. So yay, <laughs> you couldn't bring yourself the next day air. Come on, Karen. Again, I'm just, I don't know if we could be friends. <laughs> Oh, all right. So the second card I've got is I'm um, using doing the poinsettia images on and the the Christmas card with it. So again, it's the same size um, cardstock that I've got cut here with Sahara sand for my ink for my little wreath image, which again is from the swirly frames. Just going to ink that up. Um, the cardstock again was three and three quarters by five, and no special way to stamp this, just so that it's kind of off the edge. That's all. So. Uh, you do have, yeah. The second day air, I find that I do that one almost with every order. And the overnight, sometimes I can't help it and I do it overnight too. <laughs> so, oops, I almost started sticking those on. And I realized, I knew I was forgetting one thing and I forgot to grab my Garden Green ink pad. So let me grab that. And that also means that I forgot to put the stamp on the block that I need to do. And of course, my stamp set is buried over here in my pile of stuff that I need to do the stamping on the wreath. Goodness. As I was getting stuff ready, I'm like, I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. Huh? Yep, of course there was. <laughs> so again, it's garden green ink, green ink. And I've got one of the images from the poinsettia petals. It's one of the kind of, I think it's supposed to be a fill-in image for leaves, but I don't know. This is, um, I thought it worked kind of perfectly in the background for this one. So that is why I went with it. And I'm going to stamp it a couple times here on the background. Oh, I'm glad that you like it. The swirly thing, it's, you know, the swirly, 
Um, stamp set, again, is one that I didn't necessarily, it didn't catch my eye really initially in the catalog until I saw other people using it and I'm like, oh, it is an awesome set. So definitely one of those that may not be first on your list but should be on your list. So definitely it's a, a good one. Yeah, it must have been the alcohol that soaked through the papers on these because these are sticking fine. So I don't know for sure. I'm, <laughs> I've never had them not stick like that. So. Um, and I went ahead and cut these from Real Red cardstock. Again, it's that little tiny uh, flower die from the poinsettia, uh, uh, poinsettia dies. Yep, those are the ones. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this one on, I think, here. And I'm going to add another one on the other side. And I probably should have stamped my sentiment before I added these, but oh well, we'll get it. It'll be all good anyway. Thankfully, the sentiment's kind of far away from these, so I don't have to worry so much about messing that up, although I easily could, so. All right, I'm just gonna add in one last one here. And we're gonna put that one right in the center, and again, just using glue dots, and this was real red paper that I had pre-cut with one of the poinsettia dies. Now we're going to stamp the sentiment that I should have stamped initially. Um, so this is the sentiment from the poinsettia petals stamp set, and we're going to use some Versamark ink. Ink it up here. Put my paper so that it's hopefully straight on my grid paper. And then try to get this on here as straight as I can. Which is always, I don't know why Versamark is a little difficult for me to, I guess because it's clear, but <laughs> you'd think I'd still be able to see it fine. But um, then we got the gold embossing powder. And again, I'm going to do the same thing here where it's going to get real close up on the screen and then a bunch of racket because I'm going to be running the um, heat tool. All right, let me give this another quick sprinkle with the embossing powder and make sure we got a good, good coverage on it. And it's gold embossing powder. And I'm trying to keep it, again, away from the area where I've just done the stamping um, over on this side so that I don't end up with any stray flecks stuck to any of this over here where I don't want them. And then I'm going to pull out the heat tool again here and do another quick... Oh, you love the top? It's actually... I have several friends that sell LuLaRoe, of all things. <laughs> and it's actually one of their breast cancer awareness ambers. So it's... um. I thought it was pretty. It's florally and kind of girly, and it's got pink ribbons on it. I'll try to show you one here in a second. I'm just trying not to burn myself right now. <laughs> so just doing the heat embossing with it. All right. So yeah, it's a cool little top. It's got the pink ribbons all over, kind of mixed in with the flowers. So I was pretty happy with my purchase. I like it a lot. <laughs> so thanks, Karen. I'm going to give this a second just to kind of cool off and make sure that I don't smear the ink that I have just um, heat embossed on here. And again, this is what the gold cards and envelopes card bases look like. And I should have stopped and showed you that the first time around, but I was busy talking and didn't pay attention. So they've got the embossed image on it, gold, gold foil image, I guess not embossed image on it. And then I'm just going to take the little um, card front that I have decorated and put some stamp and dimensionals on the back and adhere it to the card front, maybe. There we go. If I can get the backing to peel off, that is. Hopefully y'all are having a good Friday and have something fun planned for the weekend. Not really much exciting planned here. It's uh, raining, raining, raining today. So I don't know. I don't know for sure what we're supposed to get for weather this weekend. I think it's supposed to be a little nicer. I don't think we're supposed to have rain the entire weekend. Um, so again, I pre-colored some of the, the little dots here. Some of the dots. Some of the... <laughs> rhinestones. Um, so I've got, I, I don't know if I have enough, um, I probably will have to color a few more, uh, but I'm just doing a little, just sticking them out here in the flower centers on my cards and they're shooting everywhere. So let me grab my Stampin' Blends marker and color up a couple more of them here so that I've got three that are kind of making sure they're dry before I go ahead and stick them on the card front for the next little flower I've got in line. Um, so again, the, you know, the only thing I try not to do is try not to get too heavy handed and like smash the, the end of the blends on these because um, they do have kind of little sharp edges on them. But as long as you're pretty well gentle, you can color away and um, get all of your embellishments to match whatever it is that you are stamping with. So, oh, cloudy tomorrow. Okay, good, good. 
uh, but not, not on Sunday. Oh, hmm. All right. I don't know. Like I said, I, <laughs> I haven't really been keeping up on what's going on. I just knew it was supposed to be rainy and kind of icky today. Um, usually for the weekends, I kind of pay attention to that more on Saturday morning. <laughs> so um, we don't have a whole lot planned other than I'm going to go get my flu shot. So that's exciting. Well, not really. I guess when you get old like me, going to get your flu shot is like, you know, the big outing of the day. <laughs> so, all right. So this is the card front for my um, kind of simple poinsettia card. On the inside, I also kept it pretty simple, um, just Sahara sand ink and a sentiment, and then added a poinsettia image as well. So again, this sentiment is from the poinsettia petals stamp set. And I'm just gonna, again, try to line this up on my grid paper so that I get an idea of what straight is and um, try to try my best to uh, get this stamp somewhat straight. Oop, that's pretty crickety. I think I better flip that one over and give that one a second try. Hopefully this one will be better. I think that's better. It's hard to tell. <laughs> so um, then I'm just going to ink up. This is another one of the images from the poinsettia petal stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that right over the corner uh, of this uh, little piece of cardstock. Again, this is very vanilla cardstock, which I probably forgot to say. And it's cut to four by five and a quarter. And it will fit uh, perfectly inside that card base that I've got over here. Uh, because they are standard A2 size card bases. So they're the four and a quarter by five and a half after you fold them closed. So it's, they're, they're really, really pretty and a really nice card base. And like I said, I really like them. So I actually only have one left in my pack. I realized as I was pulling things out today, I'm like, oh, I need to order another pack of these. So, all right. So that is it for my two cards today. So these are the two that we're doing. I've got my envelope here and ready to roll for this one as well, which I absolutely love these kind of shimmery gold envelopes. They're so pretty. And then just so perfect for kind of all things holiday, even the fall. Like I said, I think the fall looks really good with it as well. So, all right, that is it for today. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video and hopefully I didn't flub up too many times. And again, if you're kind of hopping in kind of late, um, Go back and watch the beginning because that's when I showed you the new uh, dragonfly awesome stamp set bundle and coordinating paper and all sorts of goodies that uh, we get to pre 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 order um, as demonstrators. So let me know if you have any questions about anything. I will be posting the details out on my blog tomorrow. So all of the cardstock cuts and information about um, the products that I use will definitely be out there tomorrow. And I will link that up in the video uh, as soon as the blog post is up. Um, again, my blog is stampwithamyk.com, so feel free to stop out and check out the information on this or any of my other projects. And hopefully y'all have a fantastic weekend, and I will plan to be back on Facebook Live around 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Tuesday and back here on YouTube Live around 2 o'clock Eastern Time next week Friday. So have a great weekend, and we'll chat soon. <laughs>